we are looking into the chapter uh, 5 where we are discussing about allocation function of government budget uh, we've covered the concept of uh, budget or if you've not yet done you will be covering the concept of budget in indian polity which is there in lakshmi kant chapter uh, if we have any doubts there we'll discuss there but here we'll stick to the economic concept of it uh, before we start there are certain concepts we need to know with respect to this particular topic the various uh, topics that we need to know is uh, what is market mechanism uh, what is the difference between public goods and uh, private goods you know uh, this uh, difference is very important knowing the difference between what is meant by public good and what is meant by private good is very important after that we see uh, what is the concept of uh, rivalrous non rivalrous excludable non excludable then we also see the problem of free riders which comes with respect to the government budget allocation or government budget spending and then we see the concept of uh, what is public provision and public production so the keywords in this particular topic will be market mechanism public goods private goods uh, excludable non excludable uh, then we have rivalrous and not rivalrous free rider public provision and public production okay let's get started with what is market mechanism we've already covered this concept in economy earlier market mechanism uh, with respect to economy and especially with respect to ncert we'll stick to what ncert says and what are the probable uh, uh, what could be the probable area where upsc would ask us questions market mechanism the simple concept is there are uh, producers and there are consumers consumers will buy products or services avail services from producers and in turn they pay them in cash or in kind so when we discuss about market mechanism we need to know the concept of it's a closed circle whether a producers whether consumers and then there is a cash or kind involved and product or service we've also discussed the topic of uh, market intervention you know uh, this is a free simple economy uh, in simple economy there's no government involved but when government gets involved we've discussed the concept of uh, uh, what do you say the market intervention right i hope you remember the topic uh market intervention could be you know subsidies taxes uh, uh various other uh, provisions given by the government which alters the price of the product uh now here we are discussing free economy uh, or a simple economy uh, not free economy sorry it's simple economy in simple economy there is a producer there is a consumer and they both have interaction between the two now uh, we bring in the concept of government also here but before we get into that let's see the difference between public goods and what are private goods public goods means that it is available to all what it means is you cannot exclude people from using the goods that are produced now here public good does not mean that it is uh, produced by the government don't go with the concept of public and always public means government that's not the concept the concept is any goods that are available to everybody to use they are called as public goods and uh, there are criterias to identify uh, what are public goods Uh, before we actually get into the concept of uh, public goods you should uh, know the types of goods what i have written about here there are four types of goods basically private goods public goods common goods and club goods uh, this differentiation you can search online and you'll get the differentiation if you have doubts in that you can ask me i'll tell you about that now we are discussing about only two two, two things one is private goods and the other one is public goods now private goods means uh, it is available to those who can afford it okay not everybody can afford everything like for example let's say you want to buy a shirt or you want to buy a bike uh, you can afford it uh, but many other people cannot afford it so technically private goods are something which people can afford so there'll be a slight confusion that you get here saying uh, you know public goods uh, it's available to all so people start thinking that public goods are free so the concept is public goods are not free public goods does not necessarily mean things are free uh, the uh, the concept of public goods is you cannot identify who is going to pay for it and who is not going to pay for it uh, i would give an example of public good uh, the street light that we use is an example of public good everybody uses that street light like you know you cannot go and say that you know the street light is uh, only for a certain set of people who are paying taxes however ideally the payment for that street light is coming from the guys who are paying taxes you know or you know the money is covered from the tax payers money so here you can't identify who's paying for it who's not paying for it however the usage of that is it's available to all okay so that's the concept of public good uh, uh, so let me reiterate again public good means it's available to all 
you cannot exclude people from using it then you have this problem of you cannot identify who's paying for it on who's not paying for it so do not mix the concept of public good or do not confuse the concept of public good to something which is produced by the government only there could also be private individuals or private entities who are providing public goods that means you cannot exclude people for example certain ngos will work for the welfare or the benefit of everybody and uh, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's only intended for certain set of people it could be used by everyone and uh, there's no money involved there uh, so public goods could be free it's not necessary it's always free that's a concept of public goods now the concept of rival uh, when you think about the concept of rival uh, there is one particular object that people are competing for or certain goal that everybody has and they're competing for it like for example assuming that there's only one bike available in the showroom currently and then if i go there i also want to buy the bike and you guys come there and you also want to buy the bike so we both will have a competition or you could see a competition where uh, there is a piece of let's say there's this government land available and uh, both of us are competing to get it so when there is competition between two of us to achieve the same thing that becomes that's the concept of rival or rivalrous what we talk about and uh, that is the key mark or the idea where private goods comes into picture okay so let's see here the concept of public on private good is not is based on how who the end users are or how the end users get to use it it's not on who manufactures what i mean by end users is uh, again public good it's accessible to all you cannot exclude people private good it is exclusively available for certain set of people who can afford it that's the difference uh, there's another way of defining what public and private goods are or the difference between them uh, it's uh, basically we discuss the concept of rival here so rival risk and non rival risk rival risk is where people are competing for something so that becomes your private good and non rival risk means people are not pr- uh, competing for that and that becomes your public good okay there's another way again one more way of dis- uh, identifying what public goods or private goods are excludable and non excludable when you talk about excludable it becomes rival risk it becomes private good it's non excludable that means non rival risk which means it is public good okay so this is the basic concept of public uh, the basic difference between public good and private good always remember do not assume that public goods means it's free do not assume that public goods means that it is uh, uh, produced by the government alone private entities also can produce can i mean to say can produce again it depends on uh, which nation you are or uh, where you are or what kind of economy you live in uh, this concept is not exclusive for india please remember that we are studying about the concepts in economy so there are multiple kinds of countries and multiple kinds of um, uh, setups within countries and we are reading about it now i've also told you to read about uh, the concept of uh, you know four types of goods please look into this very important for you know to the difference between all four i can send links for you uh, when public goods comes in there is a concept of uh, free rider problem it's a free rider problem basically what uh, this means is that uh, when public goods are provided to the public technically there could be people who are not paying anything for it so see remember always when you are providing resources it's not that it comes free of cost somewhere somebody has to bear the cost okay in public goods we do not know where or who bears that cost so the guys who bear the cost uh, get to use it the guys who do not bear the cost also get to use it like for example if a public park is been constructed it is open for all you cannot exclude people uh, we have also read this in uh, the fundamental rights chapter we have read about the various concepts of who can be allowed where they can be allowed public private property all these things we've discussed there so a public park is open for all but the public park will be constructed with the help of money from the budget and that money is from tax payers money so when you're going inside a park nobody will ask you whether are you a tax payer or are you not a tax payer and they don't they don't let you in so it's open for all so when the resources start getting used by people who do not pay for it this is called as a free rider concept now always remember free rider concept is not exclusive for public goods it could be used in any context in economy or outside as well so for example let's say there are four guys uh, working in a project and three of them are extremely intelligent and they're contributing a lot to the project and there could be one guy who is not contributing a lot or may not be too intelligent to contribute or he could be lazy to contribute 
but when they go in as a group to present the project and if the project gets availed very high marks i'm sure you would have uh, experienced this in your you know final year engineering or any course that you do all the four guys uh, get equal amount of marks however three guys could have put in a lot of work and the one guy may not have put a lot of work so the guy who did not put a lot of work is called as a free rider he is taking that advantage of Uh, you know others benefits others are using or putting in more resources and he's taking benefit out of it so please do read up about the problems of free rider uh, the problems of free rider under uh, you you can read uh, there'll be under production or there'll be over consumption when you discuss about free rider so that's not the scope of this particular topic so we won't discuss that that's something else now uh, you understood the difference between public provision and sorry uh, public goods and private goods you also know what is market mechanism So let's look at what is public provision. And uh, we've also discussed about what is uh, excludable, non-excludable, uh, rivalrous, non-rivalrous. We've seen these topics. Now we'll see the topic of public provision. Now public provision is very different from public goods. Public provision means you provide as uh, first of all provision means that you provide something especially food or other necessities. Uh, when we refer to public it is providing food other necessities which is important. So public provision is something to do with providing food other necessity items for people for the public. Now uh, when we talk about subsidies when we talk about PDS all of these are provisions that are provided by the uh, government. So public provision is like the, you always need to remember that the finance uh, financing of this happens through the budget. Okay? but then here the end users the consumers who use this do not pay anything as direct payment to this so all the subsidies all these pds end users are taking it they do not pay as direct payment or the payment might be very minimal not equivalent to the market economics uh, market economics concept where you pay equal amount so the government pays higher amount to procure the pds and uh, gives it at a low cost to the so this is uh, public provisioning okay so public goods are different public provisioning is different public goods are the goods that are available to all it's not necessary that it's free uh, it's not necessary that like you know you cannot identify who the uh, intended people are but whereas public provisioning it's not for all always it could be for a select set of people especially when they want to improve their so- uh, social status or so- not status sorry uh, the societally they want to improve their uh, um, you know their level of living or the standard of living that's when your public provision comes into picture okay then uh, we've already discussed the concept of public goods uh, we also said that public goods is not specifically done by the government alone private people also can pitch in the examples could be ngos or any other organizations which works for the public good now if the public goods are produced by the government then that's called as public production so let's reiterate the concepts that we read uh the first thing we saw was market mechanism the second thing we saw was public goods private goods then we saw consumption by private people or public people that's where we discuss about the rivalrous non rivalrous excludable non excludable problem of free riders then we talk about public provision public provision is budget financed through the budget given to the people at a very low cost or no cost at all okay and then public production any public goods which is produced by the government directly that's called as public production now uh, your question was once we know this concept your question was the houses provided by the government and food grains in pds are private goods okay so here we don't say that they are private goods technically okay uh, the reason for that is uh, when we are uh, talking about subsidies or pds sub houses could be a subsidized house and pds you're talking about when we read them they called us unrecovered cost of public provision public provision means you are providing to the public through the budget of private goods private goods is one of the thing was there is competition to it and there is exclusion in it ideally okay ba- basically they are non public goods public goods means available for all now these are private goods that's correct about it but since it's provided through budget that means since it's provided through public provision you said can it go under public good it cannot go under public good public good means it's available for all and pds is not available for all uh, subsidy also it's not available for all it is intended audience are there and it's uh, available to only those intended audience so 
the food grains and uh, the, that's food grains in PDS and the houses that are provided by the government are considered as unrecovered cost of public provision of private goods or non-public goods. And that's the whole idea.